1883 Kapstadt. Der schottische Bauernsohn James McGregor ist um die halbe Welt gereist, um in Südafrika sein Glück zu suchen, in den Diamantenfeldern im Norden des Landes. Unter schweren Bedingungen erreicht er endlich Clipdrift, einen winzigen Ort, der jedoch der Mittelpunkt des Schürfgebietes ist. Durch die schöne Margaret lernt er deren Vater, den Gemischtwarenhändler Salomon van der Merve kennen, der ihn zum Abendessen einlädt, an dem auch seine Tochter teilnimmt. Salomon van der Merve gibt James einen Kontakt als gleichberechtigten Partner und verschafft ihm eine Schürfausrüstung, die er allerdings noch bezahlen muss. Mit einem Maulesel und einer Karte, die er von Salomon erhält, macht sich James auf die beschwerliche Reise. Die Karte erweist sich als nutzlos, der Maulesel stirbt. Dennoch gibt James nicht auf. Nach wochenlangem Suchen ist die Entbehrung endlich von Erfolg gekrönt. Er findet Diamanten. Als reicher Mann, wie er glaubt, kommt James nach Clipdrift zurück. Doch Salomon verweigert ihm seinen Anteil an den Diamanten und zahlt ihn nur für 24 Wochen Arbeit aus, obwohl vereinbart war, dass sie halbe halbe als Partner machen. Eine dubiose Existenz, ein Mann namens Schmidt, lockt James in einen Hinterhalt, wo man ihn zusammenschlägt und die vermeintliche Leiche den Geiern zum Fraß hinwirft. Doch von dem Negerbander, der bei dem Überfall zunächst mitgemacht hat, wird er gerettet und gesund gepflegt. Sein Gesicht ist jedoch völlig verändert, sodass er auch von Freunden nicht wiederzuerkennen ist. James freundet sich mit Banda an, der ihm von der Wüste Namib erzählt wo Diamanten geschürft werden. Da dieses Gebiet, das scharf bewacht wird, auf dem Landwege nicht zu erreichen ist, beschließen sie, einen Floß zu bauen, um mit diesem das Riff zu überwinden. Glücklich erreichen sie das Festland und krallen sich im Sand fest. Die Wächter des Diamantenfeldes sind bereits mit ihren Hunden auf der Suche nach den Fremden. Guards are due soon. Just a few more. We've got enough. The day we died? No, the day we escaped. We've got our scent. Better go for the fence. Quite a line might stop. About a hundred yards. To go off at 80 pound pressure. Better crawl. Crawl? Yeah, spread your way out as evenly as possible. And we can just. Wait. Send the dogs. 
They're getting nearer. <laughs> We're lost. Lost before we even... What's the matter? The mist! What? The sea mist! I told you. What did I tell you? It's a miracle! There! Over there! See him! <laughs> Release the dogs! TP <laughs> boys contact, we're there! This won't last forever. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay, okay, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright. Kruger! Brent! Kruger! We gotta make a run for it. Brent! The landmines! Oh, to hell with the landmines! Kruger! Brent! Let's go for that fence. I think we're right on them now. If we can see it. Kruger! We're gonna get out of here. Oh, how? What do you intend to do now? Fly? No, no, no. Come on. Give me your diamonds. Give me your diamonds. Come on. Put on your shirt. We're going through the gate. The gate? Yeah, the gate. How? Oh, they'll know we don't belong. That's how. Should we see for a job around here? How the hell did you get in here? I crawled. You crawled? Yeah, I crawled over that fence. Yeah, look at that. That's barbed wire. Did you know that? My God, I don't believe it. Can't you bloody well read? Sure I can. Well, what does that sign say over there? It says restricted. Do you know what that means? Look, I want to see the man in charge. We've come a bloody long way. And we want jobs, and I demand to see the man in charge. Listen to me. If you don't get yourself out of this place in ten seconds flat, I'm going to have you crawling behind bars for the next 15 years. Look, we're not going until we get what we came for. Go on, take him out. Yeah, look, come, come on, on you. Get out. Come on, no, on. Come on, get out of it. Go on. Hey, watch your shot. Go on, out of it. I'll report you to your senior officer. I don't think they wanted us.
pound? More! More! My guess is close to a million! <laughs> Could have been more. But the biggest of them all is worth nothing. Stop. Do you want me to cry? I'm talking to the richest black man in the whole of Africa. True. I'm going to buy a small farm and a pair of oxen to trade for a good wife. <laughs> You've got enough to buy a thousand farms. Are you still so blind? Don't you know yet that a black man in Africa who said to have money would be killed in a week? No, my friend. I will make use of the diamonds in my own way. Well, I'm going to buy the finest suit of clothing from the finest tailor in the whole of Cape Town. Six suits. And I'm going to choose the most beautiful carriage I can find pair of horses and funny Wait, things. wait, wait a moment, please. Are you not forgetting something? Solomon Vandermoor. And, uh, we've been through a lot together. He trusts me. As I would a brother. Then I'm asking you to let me handle the Dutchman alone. A white man is in a much better position to take on another white man. Now, you know that. If I've ever lied to you, Brenda. Then trust my hatred. Trust it as you would your own. The Dutchman's gonna wish he had died the moment he laid eyes on us. Jamie, I will leave you here. I no longer have need for Cape Town. When I'm through with the Dutchman, I'll come back to you for this. Huh? Keep it for now, eh? Why? It's worth nothing. Not to me. It stands for everything we've been through. You know, it's very difficult. I never thought I would ever call a white man my friend. Could I see the bank manager, please? Have you an appointment? No. I'm sorry, but... What I do have is several hundred thousand pounds, which I would like to deposit in this bank. Uh, just one moment, sir. I'll see if he's busy. Excuse me, uh... My watch has stopped. Do you have the time, please? Yeah? Sir. Uh... Well, ten. Thank you. Sir? Sir, he will see you now. 
Thank you. So you've never been to Clip Drift before, Mr. Travis. Ian Travis. No, it's my first time. Well, I think you'll find it's a very good place to invest your money. And we'll strive to serve you in whatever way we can. Several hundred thousand? That's what he said. Yes, he's bringing it back. Can't tell. Uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Um, do I understand that you may be interested in uh, local uh, investments? Possibly. Yeah, well, if you're even thinking of it, there's only one man around here worth taking your time about. And uh, I can put you in touch with him, if you please. His name is Honda Murphy. Never heard of him. Ah, yeah, you would have if you knew this town. Yeah. He practically owns it. Now, you and he could uh, <laughs> work out something to your uh, mutual uh, benefit. I don't believe I got your name. Uh, Schmidt. Schmidt, I work at the Sundowner Saloon. Would you like that I set up an appointment? Look, uh, if this Mr. Uh, whatever his name is wants to find me, tell him I'll be around in a bit. Mrs. Smith told you about me, yes? Oh, yes, 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 I believe so, yes. Smith told me I, I would find you here. A fine-looking gentleman with a white beard, he said. And so you are. <laughs> Mr. Travis, I won't waste time. We're both busy men. So I tell you, whatever you want to invest in this area, I promise you I will double or triple your investment. Interesting. We have to be very careful. A lot of immoral people wandering about. Really? If you don't mind me asking, um, how much did you plan to invest? Look, uh, Mr. Uh, van der... Um, the van der Merwe. Van der Merwe. At this point, we hardly know each other, and I really think that... Uh, Certainly. I so... Why don't we discuss it at dinner? My daughter's an excellent cook, and we would consider it an honor to have her. Well, I'll have to consult my appointment book. Of course. Is that all? Yes, sir. So, I hope to see you tonight, sir. Margaret von der Möwe. My pleasure. Papa tells me that this is your first visit to Clipdrift? Yes. Well, I hope you like it. Did you bring Mrs. Travis with you? No, I'm not married, actually. Well, uh, as yet, I've never found anyone who would have me. Oh, I find that hard to believe. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make that sound. No, no, no. Charming compliment, Margaret. You know, uh... It was my own dear mother's name. Margaret. I always called her Maggie. Would you mind if I called you Maggie? As you wish. Thank you, Maggie. Give us from temptation. Keep us from evil. 
keep us from the devil's work, for the devil comes as a roaring lion seeking to devour. Amen. Get the food. We have only wine and beer. I never touch strong spirits. None for your daughter? My daughter does not drink at all. Used to a profitable association, uh, Mr. Uh, Travis. May I ask, sir, uh, how you acquired your fortune? I inherited it from my father. So you have no real business experience? No, not as yet. You will need a, a very strong guidance, yes? <laughs> yes, yes, I suppose I will. So what are you suggesting, then? A partnership? Exactly. Yeah. Using my money and your labor? That is correct. Well, you're asking me to place a great deal of trust in you, and the area. In both. Well, now that I've got to know you, I, I'd certainly like to see more of the country here. Would it be possible for your daughter to show me around? Well, I... My daughter is, is very busy in the store. So are you, Mr. Van der Marwe. But if she can't spare the time, well... Well, that's a shame. Never mind. P -p Perhaps for you, <laughs> Mrs. Travis. I could spare her for an hour or two. Well, that's extremely generous of you, sir. I shall look forward to that. My part, Mr. Travis. Thank you, yes. Yes. about you, but I'm starving. Lunch yourself. No, Mr. Travis, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, I never drink alone. So you've got no choice, have you? Come on. It's very soft. It's very delicate. Very pleasing. Try it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what did I tell you, eh? Sweet Maggie. How lovely you uh, are. So very lovely. Mm -hmm.
My girls are jealous. They think I should share you. <laughs> well, we could come to some arrangement. I buy the place, you run it. Not interested. Well, you sell the girls, you sell yourself. What's the difference if you sell out completely, huh? What I have here is mine, and it always will be. No one can buy me out. I think, my dear Agnes, that's why I like you so much. About your papa. I can't. If he ever found out. For him, there are only two kinds of women the good ones and the whores. If he found out about this, there'd be no forgiveness. Well, I suppose you're right. Certainly can't go on like this. I'll just have to speak to him. I'll ask for your hand in marriage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when? Today? No, not until... Uh... No, I've got two or three matters to attend to first, and then... Certainly within the next two or three weeks. Then. I'm here at all is for some bloody reason I've decided to let you live. Eh? Come close at the bar. There they are. Take a really good look. The eyes first, I think. The eyes? Yeah. yeah. It's closer, Smith. Close. Yeah. Now try and think back two years to the young prospector who came to the Dutchman for help. Do you know what happened to him, Smith? He tried to kill him. He damn near clubbed him to death and left him in the veld for the vultures to feed on. You do remember James McGregor, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Take a really good look, Smith, and tell me if you don't see him standing here. Still alive, Smith! 
James McGregor! But things have changed a bit, haven't they? You may have noticed I'm a man of wealth now, Smitty. But I'm not as wealthy as I'm going to be, with your help. Indeed, from now on, every new prospector that comes to Clipdrift will be brought to me. The Dutchman paid you 2% for the service, I'm going to pay you 5%, and you won't be cheated. I'll put up the stake, and everyone gets a fair share of the claim. Do you follow me, Smith? Good. The Dutchman's out of it completely. No more prospectors. No more dealings of any kind. Oh, and, uh... You should even think of repeating this conversation to the Dutchman. So you can collect from both of us. You'll have a small problem. You'll be dead, Smith. Make no mistake. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Yeah. <laughs> Go back to your whore. Garvey mining stocks and the carp investment total 1,600 shares. Buy up another 600. Very well, sir. And uh, hand in your resignation at the bank. Sir? From now on, I want you working for me. Well, I... By next year, I'll own the bank anyway. Do you think I could? No. I want your answer right now. Welcome to Kruger Brent. Kruger Brent? Two very important men in my life. By their ineptitude, they handed me a fortune. So that's what we're going to be called. I want all correspondence yeah. to be addressed. I've got to see you. I'll be up in a minute. Oh, Lord. Maggie. Maggie. What's the matter? I, I saw the doctor. Oh, my. Hey, not soon. You're going to have a baby. Oh, that's wonderful. I couldn't be happier. In fact, let's go and tell your father right now, eh? No, we can't. Oh, tell him we're going to get married first. Of course. Yeah. Can't object to that now, can he? Oh. No more tears, eh? <laughs> so, uh, when did you find this out then, eh? This morning. Oh, ah, yeah. Well. Seven pound ten for an axe. That's a good axe. You don't like it, you can go somewhere else. Ah, Mr. Van der Marv. Margaret and I have something very important to tell you. You, you see, the fact of the matter is, your dear Maggie here is going to have a baby. Isn't that wonderful? Your sweet little daughter is pregnant, Mr. Van der Merv. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Get out. Out. All of you out. Out. No, 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 not yet. Wait. No, wait. See, I don't want to miss the whole point. Because I'm the one who got her pregnant. I realize this must come as something of a surprise, sir, but, uh, well... <laughs> there it is. Is this true? What is it? <laughs> you must get married at once. Married? Married? Are you serious?
You could actually allow your daughter to marry a man that was stupid enough to be cheated out of a fortune in diamonds. You'd actually allow your daughter to marry James McGregor. What are you talking about? You don't remember cheating? Taking the fortune I brought you. And after robbing me blind, making certain I never talked about it. Well, I'm talking about it now, Mr. Van der Merv. Do you ever think about that when you're in church? Either one of you. No. I'm bringing you a gift in return for your hospitality. McGregor's seed in your daughter's belly. You <laughs> are <laughs> Well, my work is over here for the moment. I hope the little one brings you much joy and happiness. Why? Why? Why have you done this to me? Why have you forsaken me? That evil within her die. Let them both die. Oh, dear. She fooled us all. Well, what's your guess? How many more do you think's been with a wench? Well, I'm willing to find out. I mean, if she's giving it away. <laughs> you should have seen that Dutchman's face. <laughs> Dealing cutthroat all the time. You knew. You worked with him behind my back. Sure, sure. <laughs> you think you can scare me, Dutchman? <laughs> not anymore. I shall not forget. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Grandpapa. Greg's <laughs> 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 on the house. <laughs> Galloway contract on your desk. He's the only partner Wonder Merva has left. He still has property. Three small mines on the Vile plus the store. But he's up to his neck in loans and using them as collateral. Well, see that he gets all the loans he wants. Any amount. Drown him in loans. Very well, sir. Twenty-two thousand pounds a month, Smith. Yes, sir. It's a gross profit from the last five months. Our claims are doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a moment? Mm. Uh, it's about uh, Miss Margaret. Yeah, she did not leave town as we thought. Uh, she's uh, <laughs> she's staying over at Madame Agnes's. <laughs> yeah, I suppose she was the only one that would. Uh, Take her in and wouldn't say anything. <laughs> to think of the Dutchman's daughter in such a place. <laughs> of course, she's not uh, working like the other whores. Uh, here, she's only um, helping out yeah, uh, with cooking and cleaning. <laughs> Have you finished, Smith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Our first lesson is from the book of the Psalms of David. Psalm number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the Lord, and his Lord doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth his fruit in season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous, 
but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I'll take a dozen of the lamp wicks. Hey, Solomon. I thought you'd be stocking baby clothes here by now. <laughs> <laughs> what colours will you get, eh? How about pink harlot? <laughs> or who <whore> house blue? <laughs> 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 What you can't see here? Only three days' work. Mm. Uh, let's double the work for it. See if we can. Fundamental has closed the store, locked it up. I don't care about the bloody store. What about the notes? He's trying to consolidate them and set out a long term schedule of payments. Pull them in. Now? Give him 24 hours to pay in full, or we foreclose on everything he's got, including his store. Well, there isn't a chance he can. Yeah. <laughs> 